Did you ever buy your own idea about something? I did. One year ago, I made a video about haircut trends for 2022 on my channel. Little pre-story, if you follow me for some time, you know how much I love bob. Especially straight asymmetric bob, about one, two inches below the chin length here at the front. I talk a lot about this on my channel, and I truly think this is one of the most universal haircuts for majority of the face shapes and for the body types. It can be edgy and romantic. It can be sensual. It can be business. It can be very classy. It can be clean or tousled. You basically can do anything with it. It's not pixie yet, but it's not long hair as well. But then after I did this hair trends video and I started to grow my bob a little bit longer just because I wanted to try something new, then I got this idea that I need to try this shaggy haircut, kind of like between pixie and wolf cut. And I bit by bit started to cut layers by my face first longer, then it was shorter, then it was shorter, then I thought it's still too flat. I need a bit more movement in my hair. I need a little bit more rock and roll. So I was dreaming about having that kind of 80s mullet to be able to style it, especially for my music channel because I sing rock and roll all the time. So that was at the back of my mind, dream about having that huge 80s hair. So bit by bit, I started reshaping my bob. So I started cutting those top ones shorter and meanwhile my hair was growing. Now if you have a bob you know it's a bit easier to maintain that volume on your hair because hair is shorter it's lighter so it's like a hat and it's balancing the volume of hair and the volume of face beautifully. Now when you get to longer hair especially layered yeah sometimes some layers are lighter so it's easier for you to manipulate especially if you use products and if you use a certain blowout technique. I always wanted to try new hair products but I remembered my not very nice experience because last hair products that I bought, maybe volumizing mousse or something. It was seven years ago and I remember that feeling of that smell, that sticky hair on your pillow, on your sleep on them. My scalp would be itchy and I just didn't like that sensation. So every time I styled my hair for a stage or for a video, I had to go and wash it right away and go to sleep. I like when my hair looks a little bit more voluminous. My hair is very, very thin and it's very straight. And especially as a contrast with my head, my head is quite big. My face is quite round and very meaty. So with my face, my thin and straight hair looks even thinner. I was like, okay, I will try bit by bit new technique. And just in case something goes wrong I can always go back to my bob and then wait a little bit and then grow those front pieces that are slightly shorter a little bit longer and then I'm gonna be good. I'm loving the geometry of my haircut right now but I'm not loving the length so my plan is to go just lower with the same structure with the same geometry and with the same layering that I just did on my hair and we will see if I'm super pissed off we're gonna go back to my bob but I still want to try and grow them longer and see new ways of how I can style it with new products with new blowout techniques I just was inspired by bloggers that I watch from time to time and they say it is possible new products are really different from the ones that we used seven years ago I'm gonna just present you my two routines in one. First routine is gonna be routine for maintaining my hair healthy so to be able to grow them longer and faster so they would not bring in the ends and second routine would be for volume I'm gonna show you both and I was inspired by several bloggers they actually work in salons one of them her name is summer I think great channel if you also have thin and very straight hair I recommend you to watch her channel she's amazing I'm gonna leave the link down below and she is giving great advices for that type of hair that I have and she lives in Florida and she works in salon so in Florida there's a certain amount of humidity and also when your scalp is sweating it's weighting down your hair much more and when I was trying to do all those mullets those things that I myself was inspired by it actually doesn't suit me as much if I'm doing huge volume, it also doesn't suit me as much. I look very funny. I look like a little girl that is trying to look like a grown-up woman with this buffon hair. So I switched to that very simple blonde hair that I'm growing now. And I plan to grow them up to here approximately. And then I will decide what I'm going to do. So that length will probably be in two years. No, let's first try to grow them up to here. Let's, let's give it one year and then I will see what I'm gonna do. I might go back to Bob or I might maintain it if I know how to deal with this hair and make it look pretty and healthy. It's been recently very popular that 90s blow out. I bought those rollers in Walmart just in case. I use them sometimes, but you know, my hair is so straight and so thin, it doesn't hold the curve when I'm doing it 
with that. It only holds the curve if I use iron, but we'll talk later about it. So today I'm gonna show you how I've been influenced by those bloggers, how I entrusted my hair care routine to them, so they are fully responsible for that. I chose several products that they recommended, both for healthcare and for blowout routine, for volume. Probably I've been doing that for the last six weeks and I've seen a huge difference in the way my hair feels. And I will tell you bit by bit because probably for many of you guys it's gonna be a huge help. First routine is just three products or maybe four products. This routine I'm using when I'm sitting home half of a week, for example, I'm working all the time, not going out too much, so I don't need that volume or special hair. I just want my hair to be healthy and moisturized so they would grow longer faster. And the second routine is for my volume. It's when I'm going out and when I'm filming my videos. I'm gonna show you all the products I bought them myself. So first two products that I bought and that changed my hair game completely. If only I started watching those videos earlier, that would save me so much time. Redken Volume Injection Shampoo and Conditioner. That was a bit pricey for me. You know, when I shop for shampoos, I can go to Walmart discount section and I can buy like shampoo with a peach scent for like $2. We don't leave it on our hair. We just wash it off anyway, like who cares? It was a game changer. It's very concentrated. And for my hair, I need a tiny bit. And the best thing about those is cleaning the roots and the scalp of my head so well. So I don't wash my hair as often now. So I used to wash it every second day. It was greasy, it was itching. It stopped completely first day after I used those two. And first I bought just shampoo and I thought, oh, conditioner, I can use anything. But no, because other conditioners, they have the kind of oils that stay on your hair and they are weighting them down. So this conditioner, it's given it some moisture, but it's not weighting it down. After I washed my hair and while it's still wet, I'm using leave-in conditioner. Now you have to have something to lock in the moisture in your hair. I have very little amount of hair, so I don't need much. I spray just maybe a couple of times and section my hair like that, like that, and a little bit here. Then I brush it through and make it spread evenly. And after I dry my hair, I use Olaplex number no. seven bonding oil. This is specifically for the thinnest hair because you won't feel it. If you're buying something heavier than that, you know those greasy, more thick oils for hair? You can forget about. Your ends will be dirty, your hair will be weighted down, you won't get any volume on your hair. That was a huge change for me because this oil is actually very, very thin. So it was done specifically for very thin hair. This is another two products that I got. This is Beth Head Small Talk. It's a blow-dry cream for thicker hair and it's very similar. Red can big blowout. It's heat protectant blowout jelly. You need just a pea size of it and I use this is how much I use for my hair. If you use more it's gonna weight your hair down so I'm just doing like that and spreading through the mids to the ends of my hair and then a little bit closer to the roots. So that is already enough for me. Just comb it through. If I know that I'm gonna spend one or two days at home mostly working, I'm not gonna use my volume products. But when I do, when I film, when I go out, or just sometimes when I want, I do use some volumizing products that I also invested in. And it's Moroccan oil volumizing mousse. It's just one of the things that I loved so much. This is approximately how much I use for my amount of hair. And I also spread it evenly throughout my whole hair, but I don't do it on my roots because for the roots, <laughs> they suggested another product. I also got two things for the roots. It's Kendra Root Lifting Spray 13 and then Moroccan Oil Root Boost. I liked this one a little bit better because I feel it much less on my roots. So next time, if I repurchase, I would definitely repurchase this one, Moroccan Oil. This is the spraying pump like this. And then I'm spraying just at the front I like when my volume is just on top and not on the sides too much. And also with a brush and for blow drying, I'm just using this. It's very light, it's very comfortable, it's amazing and it's short also. So I don't have to lift my arm too much and I love this. I bought several round brushes fan. Remember that very famous by Revlon and things like that. I tried them but they, did, they gave zero effect on my personal hair. So I got back to that old fashioned round brush and the fan. And you almost can't hear it. You see, it's like you can still hear me talking like this. And my best tip for lift up the roots is making this curve like this on my hair and then blow dry it and then make it cool down and then release.
that is the curve that is actually keeping my hair up. So you can see how much more hair I already have and I didn't even roll the bottoms. I love rolling the bottoms. I even bought those in Walmart and I sometimes make that but it's actually pointless for my hair. Even if I go like that for a couple of hours, right after I style my hair while it's still hot, even in two hours when it cools down, it keeps its shape maybe till I go to bed and if it's not humid outside. My hair is so straight so it tends to be straight all the time but I don't care too much because for that purpose I use curly iron. Now, if I use curling iron, for example, I do waves, I love curly hair, especially for my music channel where I sing, this is what I use. It's Redken Thermal Spray 11. Again, this is what they suggested to use. This is specifically for curling irons. It's not for blow dry. For blow dry, this one is enough. They suggest different kinds of dry shampoo. So I just use this Batista Original. This is what I normally use. When I finish all my dry shampoos, I might try to use something new and just see the difference. If it really makes big difference, I'm ready to spend a little bit more money on that. And you know, in Walmart, Equate Beauty Original Dry Shampoo, they started making it so similar to Batiste, so people would think this is actually a Batiste, but the price? Batiste I think is $11 and EQ8 is just 4 It says it has no smell, but it smells actually like all those cheap sprays when you use in a toilet, something like that. It evaporates very fast, so I don't know, I use those for now. And the last thing that I bought is Moroccan Oil Hairspray Finish Strong, but it's actually not super strong, but it's very lightweight and you don't feel it on your hair. Another thing that I did that changed my hair game is using silk pillowcases, but everybody talks about it and it's making actually a huge difference. Also, it's not rubbing out the oils of your face and things like that. Also, I'm now getting used to a new pillow. I use this pillow for stomach sleepers, which has like a hollow on a side. And I noticed that after I sleep on that pillow, my hair volume doesn't go away. And sometimes even on contrary, I go to bed and the next morning I wake up and I have huge volume, especially around my roots. And I think it's because of those products and I'm also sleeping and kind of, my hair is shaped differently. You know, they're lifted slightly on the pillow. And I think this is because of that. So that's another thing. I'm using hair scrub crunchy and I put my hair on a bun like that and I sleep like that. I'm still getting used to it but for sure for girls with longer hair it's such a saving thing because as you know we moved to Florida and we love when it's hot outside and both me and my husband we adore local weather and when everybody is like dying from that heat we are loving it so much. We never use AC, not only because it dries out my vocal cords and I have to sing all the time, I like humidity. And our friends are laughing at us because even in summer, in Florida, with no AC, with opened window, when we sleep, we cover ourselves with a blanket. Can you imagine that? But normally I use this dawn blanket in colder months and winter months, but when it's super hot, I still love when there's something heavy on me, but breathable. And we just got recently this very funny blanket with breathable squares. So maybe this is why also in the morning my hair looks a bit more voluminous just because of that humidity and maybe slight sweat. I'm not sweating at night and maybe the pillow is creating that natural curve on my hair. So when I wake up, I just have this natural curve. So my hair is just freshly styled right now, but maybe tomorrow it's gonna be bigger volume. This is what I have in the morning. Let's see. This is day number three, no become nothing. I really like those new products that I bought and I don't feel them when I go to bed. I don't feel the smell, I don't feel stickiness, I don't feel like my head is itching thanks to this, I think, Redken Volumizing Shampoo. It's not the only shampoo that they recommend, but I just decided to buy this one. I noticed that it's breaking much less in the ends, and so it grows, but I have same thickness of my ends, which is a very good indicator for me. Because normally, your hair grows, your ends are thinning. Hair grows, ends are thinning. It's not happening. My ends are still quite thick, if you can see that. It's just, there's not as much of them left at the front, thanks to my hands, which made this haircut. 
Even though I don't quite like this haircut very much, it's a bit harder to style for me now the way I need. Also, one brand sent me clipping hair extensions. It's gonna be for one video, kind of transformation video. I'm gonna film it soon, but probably I will have to cut them. They're a little bit too yellow though for me, but it's not a problem. I don't like long hair on myself. I think they're dragging me down too much, but yeah, up to here I think would be cool. And then after I completed my blowout, I take this Olaplex number no. 7 and I use very little, just maybe that much. And I rub it. There are three hair types, thin and straight or slightly wavy. Then thicker hair, they're normally more curly or more wavy. And then very hoarse and thick hair, they're normally very curly. So for these three types of hair, you need different kinds of shampoos. They also need leave-in conditioner, but this one I think for all three types would go good. And all these three hair types need different kinds of oils. So specifically for my hair, only this oil works. Thank you so much guys for watching. And yeah, I'm gonna see you very soon. Bye-bye.